Good morning and happy Pentecost. We are delighted to be worshiping with you on this major festival day as we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the first disciples and the true movement of the church to the ends of the earth. We are excited for the ways that the Holy Spirit is moving in our life here at Muhlenberg Lutheran Church as we continue and finish our sermon series on equipping the saints. As we examine our new strategic plan at Muhlenberg, today we are talking about the new mission statement of our church to equip all people to live out Christ's love. We're, we'll hear about what that means in worship today, and we invite you into conversation around that. We'll have some time to gather together on Zoom today after this service concludes. Log on and share some quick thoughts with us, and we'll have one more opportunity on Wednesday at 7 p.m. to gather over Zoom and talk about our entire strategic plan, the things you've heard, the things you're excited about, and the questions you might have about what this means for our future at Muhlenberg. We are also excited today because this Pentecost represents a turning point in our life together after this long pandemic year. A year ago, we celebrated Pentecost with this mosaic, with our contributions from afar all coming together to make a beautiful work. But today, we have had our first opportunities to gather for in-person worship since March of 2020. We are gathering at 8.30 a.m. each week from now on for a hybrid service of Holy Communion. That service will still be offered over Zoom like it has been each week, but we'll have an opportunity for up to 50 people to gather with us here in the sanctuary for that service at 8.30. Additionally, at 10 o'clock throughout the summertime, we will have an outdoor service happening in the parking lot behind the MAC. You can gather for a service of Holy Communion outdoors each week. And don't worry, this 11 o'clock service on Facebook and YouTube isn't going anywhere. We will continue to offer digital worship in this way, but we are delighted for the opportunities to gather again in person. We encourage you to take a look at our website and at the Chimes for more information on all of these opportunities to gather for worship, and we are excited for this opportunity to see each other once again face to face. Today in worship, we will also recognize our graduates from high school and college who are part of the class of 2021. We encourage you to reach out to them and share your words of encouragement and your prayers for all that is in the future for these wonderful graduates. Now at this time, we invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for this exciting time of worship. And I would like to invite all of our youngest members to gather up close around the screen for a children's message with Pastor Lauren. Good morning, friends, and happy Pentecost. You may notice that today, We've got some different things up here in the front of the church. We have this color red on our pyramids, and we have this beautiful flowing stream of, of this colorful fabric coming from the altar. What does this look like to you? What does this remind you of? Does it remind you of fire at all? Because that's part of what this is here to remind us of is, is fire. Now, why fire, you might ask? Well, in a few minutes, we're going to hear the story of Pentecost. It is a story about the early church, not long after Jesus had died and risen and then gone up to heaven to be with God the Father. Not long after that, the disciples were all gathered together in a room, and the Holy Spirit came and rushed into the room and was with them. And they weren't sure how to describe what had just happened. It was so powerful, they didn't know what words to use. So they said, you know, it was kind of like wind and, and fire. It was really powerful. And so we, all these years later, we remember Pentecost. We remember the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples and coming to us through red and fire and wind. And the important thing both for those disciples and for us, isn't really the wind and the fire. It's how they remind us that God is with us in really powerful ways. And so today, I invite you to remember that God is with us. God's Spirit 
is with us every single day. But we remember it especially today. And so some ideas for things you might do today is you could wear red. Put on a red shirt or something else that you have that's red. Or you could see how many red foods you could eat today. Try not to just do Twizzlers though, right? Find some apples, some other red food. You could also remember the wind by flying a kite. Not sure if it's gonna be windy enough for that today. We'll see. You could fly a kite or you could blow some bubbles. Bubbles just go all over the place. You never know where they're gonna go. And that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. So blowing bubbles is a good thing to do today as well. You could also light a candle at mealtime and talk about the ways that God is with you and your family. You could put on a twirly skirt and spin around and see how the wind blows it. All of these are fun ways that you can celebrate Pentecost at home today. So I invite you to do that and to remember that God is with you always in a really powerful way. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to those first disciples, and thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to us. Help us to remember that you are with us always in powerful love. Thank you, God. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, transform our lives by your presence. Breathe new life into your people. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us in justice and peace. Renew us in the power of your grace. Alleluia. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This day you opened the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things, and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. From Acts, the second chapter. You see, when Pentecost had come, the disciples were gathered together in one place, when suddenly there came from heaven a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where the disciples were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were many devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowds gathered and they were bewildered. For each of them heard a disciple speaking in the native language of each. Amazed, amazed and astonished, they said, But are not all those speaking Galileans? Then how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? The Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and even visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, and Cretans and Arabs, all heard the disciples speaking in their own native languages about God's great deeds of power. Amazed amazed and perplexed they began to ask what does this mean what does this mean 
But you see, others sneered and said, Psst, they are full of new wine. But then Peter, who was standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all those living in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I am saying. Indeed, these men are not drunk, as you have supposed, for it is only ten o'clock in the morning. No. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, declares God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. And the sun, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of our Lord's great and glorious day. Then, then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. today is gathered and scattered, which I know sounds a lot like what I tell my Waffle House server when I'm ordering hash browns. Double order, scattered, smothered, and covered, am I right? But alas, our focus today is not hash browns, but Pentecost. This is about the work of the Holy Spirit in the formation of a new Christian community, a community that is both gathered and scattered. 
We've been journeying together through the book of Acts for the past five weeks, hearing about the Holy Spirit's activity in creating spaces of welcome, hospitality, and care, empowering disciples to be storytellers, drawing people of all ages and backgrounds in to learn and grow together, serving alongside neighbors, and centering life together around worship. We've seen how the same spirit that moved through the midst of the people in that early Christian community is still at work among us here and now. And it's been good and right for us to focus in on these specific areas of the church's life. But this week, now, we take a step back and lift our eyes up to a wider horizon to explore the bigger encompassing mission that we share. Our story for today is a prequel of sorts. It's what happened before all the stories we've talked about these past few weeks. So we have to start by going back in time a bit now to just 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Jesus has already ascended into heaven, but before he did, he instructs the apostles to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. So they do. The believers head to Jerusalem and wait. And as our story opens, it says they were all together in one place. It was Pentecost, which was a Jewish festival that celebrates the giving of the Torah, the law, to Moses. So they're gathered for this festival. And as Pastor Alex mentioned last week, the gathering of God's people is a fitting context for the Spirit to show up and inspire people. Showing up is exactly what the Holy Spirit does here in a big way. Suddenly, we read, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the beginning of Genesis, of of creation, where a mighty wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And I think we're meant to be reminded of that. The Spirit of God is rushing in to create something new here. The wind is is once again bringing something to life. And as the early church tried to put words around this incredible experience, they describe what happened next as tongues of fire resting on each of them. So, There's this one source of fire that is somehow manifested by the Holy Spirit, and it has alighted on each of them individually. Then, this is fascinating, then they begin to speak in other languages. It was like an instant Rosetta Stone thing happening here, where they just knew how to speak these different languages. And what's interesting is that the Spirit could have enabled all the people there to speak one same language, right? Or the Spirit could have enabled the hearers to understand the language of the speakers. But instead, the Holy Spirit enables these disciples to speak in the languages of the people who are gathering around them. So the Spirit's work was not to erase individual differences, but rather to empower the followers of Jesus to learn through the Spirit to speak another person's language. So there's this common mission, but a lot of individual people with their own identity and gifts and experiences and cultures who are all gathered together into this community of faith. We are meant to be together. We are a a gathered people. 
Sounds good, right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing about wind and fire and the spirit. They all have incredible power. But they also have absolute uncontrollability. We cannot control the wind. And the wind of the spirit just keeps blowing, refusing to leave people where they are, but sending them out. This today is, is Acts chapter 2, and by chapter 8, these new disciples are scattered across the world. There is this constant movement in the early church from gathering to scattering. And it wasn't always some neat, orderly process. It was messy and complicated. I mean, good heavens, some of the people who saw what was going on that Pentecost day, they thought the disciples were drunk. The early church tried things and failed and tried again. It was messy, but the wind kept blowing. There's a region of Patagonia in the southernmost part of South America, around southern Chile and Argentina, that experiences some really extreme winds. The locals there call the frequent gales La Escoba de Dios, which translates to the broom of God. I love the idea of these crazy winds being compared to, to God coming through with a broom, sweeping us up and scattering us so we may go wherever the wild wind takes us. The Spirit continues to sweep God's people towards new things. Sometimes this means new places and new people. Sometimes it means new dimensions in our work as Jesus' followers. And rarely do the people in Acts go to these new places on their own. They typically need a bit of a prompt or a shove from a broom. And they don't necessarily know right away what it means. They rely on others in the community and the shared discernment that they have to be able to start to see God's transformative presence in their lives. And through it all, there's this, this shared horizon, this shared mission. And we move toward this horizon as gathered and scattered people of God, led by the one shared spirit. In our little corner of God's kingdom here on East Market Street in Harrisonburg, we strive to keep our eyes on that horizon, to know that the wind is going to blow and keep on blowing in our midst. Sometimes we'll be gathered here in the sanctuary and sometimes we'll be scattered all over the world. And yet we can share together in our mission to equip all people to live out Christ's love. And to do that, we will start to learn one another's languages. And we will seek to honor the fire in each one of us that is bringing new life to this place. And God will sweep us up and gather us and scatter us again and again. On this Pentecost, may the Holy Spirit set your heart ablaze. Blow in your life like La Escoba de Dios. And speak through you in the tongues of angels and mortals so that all may be equipped to live out Christ's love wherever we are. Amen.
confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things, both great and small. Strengthen and heal the oceans. O Lord, that their beauty and bounty may be protected and their diversity of life be fortified. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit and with your guidance, O Lord, that they might lead their nations into peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remind us of your great love for us, O Lord, that even those who run away may come to know your compassion and wholeness. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day, especially those whom we name in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts that you have given to us. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, continue to send us prophets, that through their witness our lives may follow the right path of your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Once again, we invite you to be creative in your means of pouring out this gift of peace like the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost. Share peace with those in your household or in the comments section, or reach out to friends and neighbors this week with a word of peace. As we continue in our worship service, we move into a time of offering. As we engage in this new lens on our mission to equip all people to live out Christ's love, we encourage you to support this mission and ministry with your financial gifts. You can make these online as a one-time gift or a recurring offering at muhlenberglutheran.org slash give.
Let us pray. God of grace and gift, we thank and praise you for the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Holy Spirit, enliven our thinking, strengthen our will, guide us and give us courage that we may serve God our Father by living faithfully where we are and by generous sharing of the gifts you have given us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit, Creator, in the beginning you moved over the waters. From your breath all creation drew life. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Counselor, by your inspiration the prophets spoke and acted in faith. You clothed them in power to be bearers of your word. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, power. You came as fire to Jesus' disciples. You gave them voice before the rulers of this world. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, sanctifier. You created us children of God. You make us the living temple of your presence. You intercede within us with sighs too deep for words. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, giver of life. You guide and make holy the church you create. You give gifts, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and the whole creation may become what you want it to be. Come, Holy Spirit. True and only light, from whom comes every good gift, Send your Spirit into our lives with the power of a mighty wind. Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to show your praise. For only in your Spirit can we voice your words of peace and acclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by this Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. delighted to recognize high school and college graduates of Muhlenberg Lutheran Church today.
It's our privilege to affirm these members of our congregation who have completed one phase of their lives and move on with great expectations to another. Today, we surround in prayer our high school graduates, Ruby Arndt, Grayson Campbell, Taylor Fitzgerald, Allison Harms, June Holm, Abby Moyers, Cody Saunders, and Connor Wells. We also celebrate our college graduates, Anna Derrick from Roanoke College, Sarah Furr from Blue Ridge Community College, and Samantha Llewellyn from James Madison University. At this time of celebration and transition, hear these words from Holy Scriptures. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. We hear as well a reading from 1 Corinthians. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of, serv of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Graduates, as you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new chapters of your lives, be mindful of your grounding in faith and of your vocation to serve God in all your life's works and accomplishments. As you journey forward into the next chapter of your life, you have a community of love and support here at Muhlenberg. And so, members and friends of Muhlenberg Lutheran Church, will you promise to keep these graduates and their families in your thoughts and prayers as they go forth into their futures? If so, respond, we will. We will. Will you, as fellow believers in Jesus Christ, promise to help these graduates as need and opportunity arise? If so, respond, we will. We will. As some of these graduates begin new paths away from home, will you, as a community of faith, rejoice and offer welcome each time they return to this place they've called home? If so, respond, we will. We will. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks, especially for the milestones that these graduates have attained. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all the experiences they encounter. Bless also the families of these students who have supported them, challenged them, and raised them up in the Christian faith. Give their family strength in your continuing presence and give them many joyful reunions with their children who may be leaving home soon to begin new and varied ventures. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Graduates of the class of 2021, go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve our God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go from here as witnesses of what you have seen and heard. Share God's love with those you meet. Tell God's story to those who have not heard. Bring hope to those who are in despair. Live lives of gratitude and praise. And may the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and among you this day and forever. Amen. We have been renewed at the wellspring of God's grace. Now, go in peace. We go to be open, authentic, relational, serving. Thanks be to God.